guys, this is TechRage. This is the EVGA 1080 Ti for the win free. Absolute beast of a graphics card. Can't wait to get this installed. And yeah, let's, uh, let's get this bad boy unboxed. Here we go. So the EVGA for the win free. Now I did a review on the, the for the win too. It was absolutely beast of a card. So when I saw this was announced, you know, I, I thought, yeah, I'll stick with this one rather than the competitors like MSI or Asus. So in the box, you get your usual EVJ stickers, not that you'd ever be seen alive sticking them anywhere, and a poster, uh, which is pretty good, it's quite nice. A manual and another thing, no idea what that is, stick it on the front of your case. Blue bit of paper and some information about more of the, the firmware upgrades and changes that they've done to the, the plate on this thing. And again, some more information on all the ports on the rear. So just make sure you've got the correct cables and everything else for your system. Also inside you get two lots of eight pin connectors from EVGA. These are quite stiff, so uh, if you've got your own, then perhaps you'd like to use those. Straight off the bat, as you can see, you've got your free fan design here. So it's much improved over some of the competitors as well. You know, EVJ have really put some effort in with the cooling on this card. On the rear, you can see the back plate, all nice black. And uh, you've got the EVGA logo there, which actually lights up, which is RGB. It looks absolutely mint. So this is an 11 gigabyte card with nine thermal sensors, RGB lighting, and a whole heap of raw power. The base clock on this is 1569 with a boost clock 1683, and that's out of the box. There's plenty of room for improvement. You've got HDMI on the rear, as well as three display ports and a DVI port. But this card actually only takes up two spaces, two PCI spaces rather than two and a half. So that's gonna be a massive decider for certain people trying to fit this into their system. Like I said, you've got your two eight pin uh, power connectors there, which are actually drawing 280 watts of power, which is more than the Founders Edition. But it's got a dual BIOS as well, which uh, you can switch between master and slave. There's a switch on the side for that. So if you wanna overclock it a bit, push it to its limits, you know, the options there for you. The main key feature on this card is the cooling. As you can see, you've got loads of prongs sort of sticking up there as high as possible to dissipate the heat around. All of the fan controls, you can independently control each fan and it automatically cycles through for you, monitoring all of the temperatures on each fan and adjusts it as you go along. You can set a fan curve for all three of them so that they're all on the same, but personally, I'd just leave it as it is out the box and you can probably set it to the aggressive mode just so the fan kicks in a little bit earlier. So you can see 95% of this card is actually cooling, just to dissipate that heat away from the card. They don't want any repeats of previous cards where they've had some overheating issues. So they really are on point now. They, they learned from the previous one. The For The Win 2 card really made the improvement. They've managed to step this up even more for the For The Win 3. Now I've taken my 1060 out, and as you can see, it's a massive difference in size between the two cards. And after I installed the, the new 1080 Ti in, I was super chuffed, and then I couldn't get the glass on the side of the case. So keep this in mind, this is a big card. You know, make sure your system is big enough. It's might just be because this is quite a unique uh, sort of test bench dash showcase, and I couldn't get the glass on the side of the thing again. So I'm actually gonna be getting another case just to house this because I'm going to be keeping this uh, for future. So just bear that in mind that this does take up quite a lot of room. So EVGA have got their Precision OSX. OSX XOC. Now, and here you can control everything, you can monitor everything, you can see all nine temperature sensors here and it displays every single area on the back plate from your, your power delivery, your memory, your, your GPU, absolutely everything is covered here. And you can get real-time feedback and you can just adjust absolutely everything. You can adjust the fan curves, 
for each fan, you know, what temperature you want it to kick up at, how aggressive you want the fan to be, you know, how quickly you want it to kick in, whether you want it all the time, whether you want it switched off when it's at low temperatures, you know, it, it really is a good system to work with and it's so intuitive and I didn't have any problems when I was trying to play about and mix up all of the settings. And if you, if you ever think, oh, I wish it was back to the way it was, hit that default button and you're good to go. Now I loaded a couple of games, Battlefield 1 uh, was one of them, GTA, and just put all of the settings at Ultra. You know, I've not got SLR or anything like that, but it just seemed to be buttery smooth, really snappy. The, the, the graphics were completely crisp and it didn't seem to lag or any tearing or anything like that. It was absolutely amazing response. Now while I was pushing all these games, the maximum temperature I actually saw was 60 Celsius. 60. Now this is absolutely amazing. It just goes to show that all of that EVGA cooling that they've put in with that ICX technology really is working. And it makes you wonder how far you can push this card, you know, with the temperatures so low. And also just longevity of the card as well. With such low temperatures, you know, this thing really is going to last some time. Now Ashes of Singularity is a really demanding game, but it just blitzed through it, had some decent frame rates, and I, yeah, I just can't wait to be gaming on this in the future. Benchmarks speak for themselves. 3D Mark had a really respectable score. Now these are gonna differ from card to card. Not all the cards are the same out of the box, but I managed to get a graphic score of 10,280 on Time Spy and 29,900 on Fire Strike. And got between about 117 to 145 frames per second. Now, while I was doing the benchmarking and the testing, I saw just short of 2,000 megahertz, but I wasn't pushing the card to its 100%. So I was trying to find that sweet spot where you know I'd love to keep it all the time. One thing I did notice that once you've got the power cables in place, it's not very easy to see your monitor lights that you've got there, which display your sort of thermal information back at you. So obviously most people have their case sort of in front of them to the right, but if you've got your cables hanging down like I have, you're really not gonna be able to benefit from seeing those indicators. It would be nice if they were put in the middle or to the left of the EVJ logo, uh, a little bit like the For The Win 2 card was. It would just be a bit better for the feedback. But to be honest, when you're gaming, you're not gonna really give a crap about what the temperatures are. So yeah, not really a drama. Alright guys, that's it for the EVGA 1080 Ti for the win free card. God, that's not a mouthful, is it? But it definitely is a win. If you've got the money to invest and you want to invest in the 1080 Ti, I'd definitely spend the extra couple of quid to get something like this. It's got the extra cooling, the performance and everything else. You know, it really is a solid bit of kit. And I think at the moment, it's probably one of the best Ti's you can buy. So, all the links will be in the description below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and don't forget to check me out on the next video. I'll see you next time.